Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Getting Started series. This multi-part series is designed to get users proficient in the tools and capabilities available within the Quick Terrain Modeler software. This chapter covers the useful tools for assessing the data quality as well as inspecting point level attributes. Let's get started by looking at a file's geotags and other header information. Click on the Add Model button and navigate to where your files are located. Once you have a file selected, you can look down at the bottom in the header viewer and this is all the information that's being populated from the header of that file. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll find the georegistration section. Sometimes you'll see the wrong tags populated here, or no tags at all, and they'll come up as unknown. This is what a well-tagged file would look like. If the tags are wrong, or not tagged at all, you can load the file in and go to Edit, and then Set Model Position. Now you can click the Relabel button, Override Native Data Projections, and there's four different methods to override the projection information. Also within this tool, you can reset the position by translating the data in the easting, northing, or vertical, as well as adjusting the orientation in pitch, roll, and heading for point clouds. If you have a surface model, you can set the no data value here as well. To look at model-specific information, simply left-click the model in the layer tree. This will give you information such as file extents, point density, and scale. Down at the bottom, we can create histograms of any attribute that's in the data, and can be exported as well. Speaking of attributes, there's also point level attributes. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and left click a specific point. And now that we've queried that point, we can see all the attributes associated with that specific point. This will contain all the attributes within the LAS or LAS file, as well as any QT modeler generated attributes, such as slope and AGL values. We can also color and filter the data based on any of these attributes. These are our quick color buttons. I'm going to click on the QTA drop down here and color by classification. And now we can see each class in the file is colorized separately. Other attribute combinations, such as first, last, and intermediate returns, can also prove useful. Data can also be filtered based on attribute by going to Analysis, Filtering. And there's a few separate filter tools. I'm going to start with the QTA Discrete Filtering. I'm going to enter in my classification field and pack attribute into filter channel. It'll give me a listing of my classes that are found in the files. I'm going to click on my class 2 points. And now we can see all the point cloud is now filtered based on my class 2 ground points. Another filtering option is going to Analysis, Filtering, QTA Continuous Filtering. This tool is really designed for when you have a, a continuous ramp of values, such as Z, AGL, or I'm going to do Intensity now. Select Intensity, Pack Attribute into Filter Channel, now you can see the point cloud is also colorized based on intensity, and I have a filter channel here by dragging these slider bars back and forth. So now we can filter the data based on the intensity value. A moment ago, I mentioned how to retag a file that might be unknown tags or tagged incorrectly. And that's different than converting a coordinate system. If you need to convert the coordinates, simply go to Edit, Convert Coordinate System, and just like in the previous windows, you have four methods of how to define the new coordinate system, and Qt Modeler will do the conversion for you. If all you want to do is change the way the display units are being shown in Qt Modeler, so not quite a conversion, just simply showing a different data unit, go to File, Options and Settings, and then Set Display Units. So right now I'm showing meters, which is the global default for this data set. I can switch that to US Survey Feet. And now all of my data units are going to be in feet. Now let's create a density map using the grid statistics tool. I'm going to turn off my vertex colors and turn on my height color. I'm going to click on my grid statistics button. It automatically populates to my current data coordinate system. I want to choose density as my uh, variable. Click calculate metrics. And I'll zoom out to show this is an overall density map of my nine separate files. We can see each individual scan line as well as the overlap areas. You can also see higher density in vegetation, which is pretty typical of LiDAR data. Another way to assess the quality of your data is generating spatial index. I'm going to close this window, go to Export, Create File Index. I'm going to select my Folder to Index, which is going to be my entire Getting Started series data. Click Select Folder. I'm going to save out an index file name. Click Save. And we also have options for shapefiles as well. I'm going to go ahead and click Go. 
A log file opens up, tells us information about how many files were there, how many were properly geo-registered. And Qt Modeler will automatically open up Google Earth at this point if installed on your machine. And it'll zoom you to your index files. As I zoom in a little closer, each individual file will have a vector associated with it, as well as a marker in the middle, which contains metadata information about that file. I'm going to split my screen between Google Earth and Qt Modeler now. And another nice way to assess the spatial information within your file is by using the G key in Qt Modeler. So I'm going to zoom to an area of interest in Qt Modeler. And I'm going to click the G key on my keyboard. And if Google snaps that location, you should feel pretty confident about the spatial information within the files. Note that you can also real-time sync Google Earth by clicking on the, the Google Earth Sync button. And now as I move around Qt Modeler, Google Earth will show me that same perspective. And it also synchronizes much of my information. So as I drop markers by holding down the M key and left clicking in Qt Modeler, it also creates them in Google Earth. If you have any questions or feedback about the content of this chapter or any other topics in the Quick Terrain Modeler, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you.